Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, my name is Naila Shuja and you're watching Rise to Survive on City2.tv. Today I'm joined by Dr. Maham Akbar who is a resident of internal medicine at a medical center in uh, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I'm so happy to, you know, have you on the show today, Dr. Maham. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to learn a lot from you in this, you know, uh, discussion. Dr. Maham, uh, I'd like to begin by asking you how many uh, confirmed cases of COVID have been recorded in the New York State area? I mean, as of now, we've had close to 350,000 cases in New York State, out of which like 200,000 cases are in New York City alone. I believe like 27,000 of these patients have already died. So the numbers are absolutely crazy. Can you share with us, uh, you know, what challenges that you and your peers have faced, you know, uh, during this whole coronavirus pandemic? I think one of the major challenges of this pandemic has been watching patients die alone. And I don't think there's anything more traumatic than that, you know. Obviously, because of the contagious nature of this disease, uh, we had a no visitors policy, you know, which is still in effect. And that means that anybody who's really sick and has the COVID infection cannot see their family. And uh, we would have to make do with uh, FaceTime phone calls, voice calls, anything, leaving messages. But it was very, very difficult because when you see that your patients essentially just have you as their sole support or as their last um, as the last person that they're going to see before they pass away it's um, a very um, you know painful experience and um, that is something I don't think I'll ever be able to get over it because there is no other disease that you know we've known in which families are completely in which patients are totally isolated from their families and it's never been like this before um, the other thing that really, really um, was, you know, very, very difficult for us was the fact that we had to wear PPE up to like 12 to 15 hours a day at a stretch. And, you know, that was, that takes a toll on you. I mean, we would wear an N95 mask. It's basically, um, it prevents airborne transmission of particles that makes a tight seal around your mouth. And then on top of that, we would wear a surgical mask on top of which we would wear a face shield or goggles and then you know you're wearing a gown as well so the baggage of the whole ppe would really take a toll on us you know and at the end of the day it's just like okay you're taking off like two kg worth of you know weight that you've been carrying all day it, it was something you know and still is a very big challenge you know and we probably have to continue doing that until we stop seeing patients with covid come in this coronavirus situation has uh, slowed down all aspects of life. Um, you know, how has your experience been? I mean, for me, it's always been to look at things, you know, a day at a time, um, especially in the face of a crisis. You know, you want to get through each day thinking that, yes, I have done something that I should be, you know, happy and proud about. I have made it through the day. I have survived, you know, and that was an the feeling of accomplishment on its own for a lot of us, you know. So we saw life like that. Let's get through one day at a time, one patient at a time. Um, but it was very, very difficult. Um, it wasn't as easy as it sounds, you know, and um, however, we were pretty lucky that we had a very good uh, supportive healthcare system. Our hospital was very, very supportive of its co-workers. Um, and I think the major support that we got was amongst ourselves, like all of our co-workers. We were going through it together, right? So when, you, when you're going through something together, you kind of, your colleagues know what you're going through, you know what they're going through, so you can face things and be stronger together. I think that's really what got us through things and is still getting us through the current, you know, situation. So with reference to confirmed coronavirus patients, uh, they're basically encouraged to donate blood. Can you explain how this helps, you know, in the big picture or, you know, in just in detail why this, uh, you know, donation of blood is important? Yes, plasma donation has become uh, another hot topic of discussion over the last couple of weeks. The basic concept is that once your body gets an infection with a particular virus, it makes antibodies against that virus. So that the second time around when you have the infection, you know, you already have those antibodies and your um, body.
body can fight off the infection as part of the immune system response you know so um, if you can donate plasma uh, to patients who have are fighting the infection uh, the plasma would already contain those antibodies and help them fight off the disease more effectively. Um, but as of now, you know, nothing much can really be said whether it's effective or not effective. It's still a lot of research needs to be done in the area to uh, explore the efficacy of, you know, uh, plasma donation as of now. Now, many people don't really comprehend the safety and precautionary measures uh, that are there to not only help themselves, but also to help others. Now, my question for you is, what would happen if the lot of medical professionals were infected? Yes, I completely agree with you, Nyla. A lot of people uh, don't understand uh, why these safety measures are in place, and a lot of people don't even understand uh, the concept of social distancing. I feel like this might be a good uh, time for me to actually address the misconceptions that you know people have. Basically, why is social distancing important, or why do we need to you know practice social distancing? A lot of people don't understand how is it going to break the chain of transmission. But uh, here's the thing. So COVID-19 is a very deadly disease. However, it can, you know, um, however, about 70% of people who get infected actually have a very mild illness, but 30% of people who get infected can have a terrible course of disease and they can actually be the ones that, you know, end up on the ventilator and that end up you know passing away so the thing is how do you know which category you fall into you really don't you know that's the simple answer you don't know which category uh, you will fall into because everyone has different bodies and everyone has different immune responses and immune systems so you can't you know tell who's going to do a good job fighting off the infection who won't but the scary part about this thing about this disease is that the 70 percent of people who get infected can actually have a mild course of disease and they can actually even be asymptomatic they can be coughing they can actually be breathing or the air in and around you and not have any signs or symptoms and that is a very alarming phenomenon because you know they might not actually be um, showing any signs of cough or they might not be having any difficulty breathing but they'll be around you they'll be totally asymptomatic and they'll be transmitting the virus to you you know so that's very important. Who do you know that you know? Like, for example, let's take it scenario based. You go to a party at a party. This one person was, let's say he was sick and he was asymptomatic. He wasn't showing any symptoms, but, you know, he got infected. His immune system was OK, so he is not having active symptoms. But now he hung out with like 10 people at the party. Now all of those 10 people were exposed to him and they all got you know the virus they all uh, got it by transmission now out of those 10 people let's say you know eight of them did terribly and two of them did okay so if they hadn't gone to that party in the first place they would never have been exposed to the asymptomatic person and you know they would have been okay that's how the concept of social distancing works you need to protect yourself because you don't know who's sick that's why you need to stay at home you need to prevent other people from coming over because you don't know who's sick you don't know who can give you the infection that's how social distancing works and that's why it breaks the train of the chain of transmission now there are many old age homes or nursing homes in the new york state area uh you know those with compromised immune systems or very weak immune systems uh, what is some advice that you can give to them in order for them to keep safe and avoid being infected? For sure. Um, I believe um, nursing homes as well as adult group homes now face the added challenge of the COVID-19 infection because uh, it's very tricky controlling infections once they you know, spread amongst nursing homes and adult group homes. I think the best uh, form of advice would be to control the entry and exit points. Um, these places should have a no visitor policy. Um, everybody should be, all the employees of those uh, nursing homes should be, you know, self-monitoring themselves for vital signs, self-monitoring for any fevers, signs of difficulty breathing. Um, and then anybody with those signs or symptoms should be, you know, quarantined for at least a period of two weeks until their symptoms uh, resolve. Um, 
the major challenge lies when one of these patients you know falls ill and needs to be hospitalized for any other reason like for example if they have a uh, urinary tract infection or if they have like some sort of a serious um, GI infection uh, that needs to you know be evaluated at the hospital that's where you know challenges lie because I have personally I have seen cases of um, adult patients coming in from nursing homes and they come in for complaints other than COVID and while they're in the hospital they acquire the COVID infection because it's so prevalent you know um, so from that perspective it's still a challenge but um, while everyone is in the nursing home they need to be you know uh, there needs to be a strict monitoring of who's going in who's going out no family visitors, nothing else like that. A good thing that we have done over here is that any patient who gets admitted to the hospital or from a nursing home for reasons other than COVID, um, that patient is essentially tested twice, once at admission for the COVID infection and then again before discharge. And these patients are not sent back home until they are, you know, um, they test negative. For the infection because we can't afford the risk of you know sending a patient back who's still positive for COVID and then the whole nursing home would have it essentially. Now Dr. Maham uh, you know just to wrap things up I kind of want to know how you're personally dealing with this uh, coronavirus situation uh, you know considering that you are a Pakistani in New York uh, not being able to come back home and see family or friends how has that you know uh, been on you? It was definitely uh, very, very difficult and um, very challenging because uh, the last few months have, you know, taken a toll on me and especially uh, I think something that was very difficult for me to come to terms with was the fact that I can't go back home this summer. I essentially cancelled my vacation plans and uh, uh, I, I mean, that was also a good decision because um, Currently, the current scenario, travel isn't recommended and uh, it just, you know, defeats the whole social distancing purpose. But um, obviously, it does take a little bit of stress on you. But however, I've been, I've been managing okay. I've been, uh, you know, keeping myself preoccupied, reading a little bit of books, uh, exploring my creative side, like picking up some hobbies alongside. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been okay. I'm just like hopeful that things, I, now that we've flattened the curve, I just hope that there is no second wave and I hope that people will continue practicing social distancing. I hope people will continue keeping hand hygiene in mind and uh, you know, hopefully things will slowly start reopening and resurfacing and then um, you know, let's let's hope for the best. That's all I can say right now. Well, Dr. Maham, thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you guys uh, for watching, uh, you know, this episode of Rise to Survive on City2.TV. Make sure you guys give this video a like and a share and comment down below your opinions on how, uh, you know, your state or your government and uh, your country is tackling the whole coronavirus situation. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Allah Hafiz.